Station Houston on two for Mark. We will be ready for an on-time start. Happy thanks. Station Houston, are you ready for the event? Houston Station, I am ready for the event. CARE 11, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call the station for a voice check. Station, this is GMA with CARE 11. Are you ready? I hear you loud but broken. Oh, loud but broken. One, two, three. Again, station, this is Gia Bank with CARE 11. How do you hear me now? I, I can definitely make out what you're saying. It's not coming in as clearly as normal, but I think it'll work. Okay. Mark, thank you for spending the time with us here in Minnesota. I know you know a lot about the state. First, want to check in with you. By the end of this, you will have spent nearly a year in space. How's your mental health and what are you doing to keep it healthy? I'm sorry, the very last sentence did not come in clearly enough for me to understand. Okay, let's try it again. Mark, thanks for spending your time with us today. I know you know a lot about Minnesota here. I want to check in with you first. How is your mental health? Because by the end of this, you'll have spent nearly a year in space. What do you do to keep it healthy? Oh, that's a great question. I think mental health on a trip this long is really, really important. What I've been doing is making it a habit to get up first thing in the morning after I have a snack, maybe a cup of coffee, is to open the cupola windows and then uh, meditate for 20 minutes. Okay, so you will surpass the Kelly's record for the longest space flight once this is done. I imagine that that's kind of settled in by now. How does it feel if the mission comes so close? Again, I'm really sorry. It's not coming in very clearly. I think you asked me how it feels to be up here for so close to a year. So answering that question, um, it really feels like I've just been given a fantastic opportunity to push the limits for human spaceflight. Um, it's really a team effort to do this, so I think of this as much more of a record for the entire team, not so much one for myself. Mark, I have to ask you, because, uh, I mean, obviously in the news right now, here on the ground, there's a lot of tensions between the U.S. and Russia, with Ukraine right in the middle. Uh, I'm curious, what conversations are you having with your Russian crewmates, and what does it sound like up there? I should skip the question. I should skip the question. We get along fantastically with our Russian crewmates, and I think any time we can get people from different countries to uh, have relationships with each other, we'll realize that everybody, no matter where you come from on the planet, we're human beings. We've got similar desires, goals. Um, we want to be successful. We want to make sure our children are well taken care of. So for me, that's been one of the wonderful things about being in this space program, it being an international program, that I've got crewmates on this currently from Russia and Germany and the United States, of course. Um, we haven't had a lot of conversations about uh, current events in, in, uh, on the border with the Ukraine. Um, so, yeah, that's really all I can say is we haven't talked about that too much. Uh, I'm not sure we really want to go there. And I, I'm curious also, I know that uh, current events isn't kind of what you guys are talking about, but there is uh, every day in the news. I mean, this morning we had a story about Virgin Galactic, commercial tourism, space flight is a thing now. You, I think, have a unique perspective as an astronaut versus a, quote, regular person. So I'm wondering your thoughts on that. Again, that came in. I heard, what are my thoughts on it? Um, I didn't catch exactly what my what the topic was. Yeah. Commercial space flights. This morning we had a story about Virgin Galactic. Um, I'm curious, as your perspective as an astronaut, what are your thoughts on commercial tourism in space? Oh, that's a great question. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to answer. Um, so commercial space flight is something that NASA is really heavily invested in being successful. We want the government to be one of many customers, and for that to happen, we need to have a successful business model for commercial ventures in space. I've been fortunate to be up here for uh, two different 
uh, crews arriving that were uh, completely private folks. Uh, they were wonderful to be up here. It was really interesting to be able to share this amazing experience with them. And of course, my crewmates, other than myself, that have arrived recently came up on a commercial vehicle, even though they are government astronauts. So I think it's really important, and I'm very proud of the successes that we've had so far. Mark, I am curious to know, um, you journaled a lot up there. I understand any other witnesses you worked out in your journal entries? She's not. She's not. She keeps ad-libbing. Yeah, I didn't catch any of that. Please say again. Time, Mark. Uh, I know that you journaled a lot while you're like, up there. Like, she any big moments as you look back at your journal entries? Clear, simple question. No worries. Yep, that was still inaudible. Sorry. Station, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by while we work technical difficulties with the client. Copy, thanks. Will do. Hey, Mark, I don't know if you can hear me. It's Gia with CARE 11. Just wanted to ask you really quickly about Minnesota. If you have anything you're longing for that's very Minnesotan right now. Gia, that came in very, very clear. Um, yeah, I can. Um, am I longing for something from Minnesota? So the biggest thing I'm longing for is the most important thing to me in Minnesota is my family members, my mom and dad, my sister and her husband and their children. So uh, those are the most important things to me about Minnesota, as well as um, my high school and college friends that are still in Minnesota. So that is uh, that. And also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that having been indoors for this long, the outdoors in Minnesota is extremely appealing to me right now. Even the snow, Mark? I definitely miss snow. If I had the opportunity right now to jump outside, no matter what the temperature, and roll around in snow, I would take it. Wow, I love that. Okay, first thing you're going to do, we obviously know you miss your family and friends, but first thing you're going to do when you get back to Earth, besides seeing family and friends. I am going to spend as much time outside as possible. I hope it's raining soon after I get back because I really want to stand outside and get rained on. I know that sounds strange, but that's just something that I've, I haven't felt for a really long time. Okay, Mark, one final question for you because I know you have to go, and now that we finally hear each other, you have journaled a lot up there. I'm wondering if you look back at your journal entries and see any big moments. What are the big moments for you? Gosh, the first thing that comes to mind is after arriving up here, it was shocking to me how familiar this environment seemed because I had been up here a few years before. But it's so different from day-to-day -day life on the Earth that it kind of felt like I had gone back in time and was getting to vividly relive a memory of the past. And I, I'm not sure if you can appreciate that, but that's how it felt. And it, it was a very strange feeling. So that's certainly uh, the first thing that pops to mind. Yeah, I mean, I can certainly appreciate your sentiment on that, having a different perspective. Mark, thank you so much for your time. And we'll see you back on Earth soon. I hope so. Thanks. Good talking to you, Gia. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CARE 11 portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KNSI Radio. Station, this is Jennifer Leverens with KNSI Radio. How do you hear me? Jennifer, I have you loud and clear on the space station. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today. First off, tell us about the mission you're on and what the crew is doing. 
We are doing all kinds of science. There are 60 to 100 experiments going on at any given time on the space station, and we are facilitating that by making sure that the laboratories are maintained and all the science experiments have the resources they need to be conducted. That's the short answer. Well, what's something that came out of the space program that we benefit from here on Earth that we might not know about? Well, there's actually one of the things that occurs to me is the when we do a spacewalk, we're in a pressurized suit, which makes it very difficult to move your fingers because you've got to fight the pressure to flex your fingers, something you don't normally have to do. Uh, it turns out that the automobile industry has similar things because they have people that have to do repetitive tasks on assembly lines to build cars. So GM and NASA, through a company called BioServe, created uh, a glove with tendons to help um, help those repetitive tasks be done more easily. So it's kind of robotics assistance to human beings. And that's something that came out of the space program. That's amazing. I knew, like, microwave ovens and insulin pumps. I had no idea about that. Uh, so what is kind of one of, you know, I was surprised about that answer. What's the most pleasant surprise you found when you got to the ISS? Uh, the most uh, pleasant surprise for me was the dramatic difference from arriving the first time on my first flight and coming back for a second flight that it was kind of like riding a bicycle. My ability to move around the space station was much better on day one of the second flight than it was on the first flight. So what's one of the most challenging things about being in space for so long? So being in space outside the space station is an environment that is very inhospitable to human life. So we don't get to go outside very often. And I think that's the biggest challenge for me. I like being outdoors, and I have not had a single day of being outdoors since I've been up here. And even those of my crewmates that have done spacewalks on this flight, they had to do those in basically their own personal spacesuit, or their own spacecraft, which is their spacesuit. So even then, you're separate from the outdoors because of this uh, very good spacesuit that protects you from the environment. How many spacewalks have you done? I've done four. And what was kind of your most favorite part about those four spacewalks? Uh, the view. When you are doing a spacewalk, you have lots of work to do. You're very focused. You've spent tens of hours. I, probably 40 hours mentally preparing for that spacewalk, and then it's the best view you could possibly get because no matter which direction you look, is amazing to see. And every time you look down, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. No matter if it's at night or during the day, it's glorious. However, you have to really stay focused on what you're doing. It's just like the most amazing office window you could possibly have. My husband was actually wondering how much time you spend looking out the window. I spend at least 20 minutes every day because one of the first things I do is go to the cupola when there's not a, restricted, a restriction on opening those shutters. Uh, I open the shutters and I spend 20 minutes with my eyes open meditating in the cupola every day. Of course, sometimes when I see something interesting, I want to capture it after I'm done meditating with, by taking a camera out. I'll spend even more time. And then also on weekends, we spend to spend more time out there. But uh, not as much time as I would like is really the short answer. So we've talked about the challenging things about being in space for so long. What's the most challenging thing once you return to gravity, and how do you prepare for that? Oh, gosh, I am very well adapted to living in a room that is constantly falling towards the Earth, and so the floor is always falling away from me, and, you know, it's easy for me to move around in space. When I get to the ground, that uh, floor is not going to be falling away from me, so it's going to be pushing hard on my feet. I haven't experienced that for a long time. So it will, there will be some adaptation. I haven't had to worry about falling down for the last almost 11 months now. So my, the muscles that help me balance, I'm sure, are weaker, even though the major muscle groups, we do a great job of keeping strong. So I'll be pretty sore. I'll probably be a little grumpy if I pick up one foot and try to tie my shoelaces. But uh, that, that changes quickly, too, because the human body adapts very quickly to whatever environment we're in. 
What sort of training did you have to prepare for before you blasted off? Well, there's years of training we have to do. Um, everything from spacewalk training to robotic operations. In fact, I'm, some of my crewmates are preparing right now to grapple a visiting vehicle on Monday so that we can get the cargo off of that vehicle. But they have to reach out and grab it with a robotic arm. That takes a lot of training. Russian language training. I served previously as a co-pilot on a Russian spacecraft, so I had to be very proficient in Russian. There's lots of different systems that help protect us, our environmental control and life support system. We've got thermal control systems. We've got our computer systems. All kinds of things that we have to understand to be able to function on the space station. And fortunately, we have a great team of subject matter experts on the ground that will really coach us through the challenging things. So we have to understand how to work well with them. Um, and even one of the things I really enjoy on the ground as well is we've got to learn how to operate in an operational environment, one that potentially could cause your life to be at risk. And our NASA jets are a very good way to get us psychologically trained for that situation because we work as a member of a two-person air crew flying an actual jet that, if you mess up, could cost your life, but with the support of, a, of an air traffic control team, a ground control team. You mentioned having to use robotics to grapple a space vehicle on the way. Uh, with more and more satellites being launched for Internet and communications and streaming and such, what sort of risks are posed to the ISS and other spacecraft? Well, the, there certainly is a lot of space debris in the space environment, and the space station was built with that in mind. There are places that have been impacted on the outside of the space station, and the space station has had no problems with that. We've never, never had a, uh, an object come from the outside and penetrate through to the inside of the space station. Um, however, that's always a risk, so we've got national assets that pay attention to where the debris is, the, the pieces that are big enough for us to be tracking. And there's coordination between national, NASA flight controllers and those strategic assets to warn us if things look like there might be what we call a conjunction. And based on the risk, we'll decide whether or not we want to change our orbit with a reboost or a deboost to get to a safer orbit. And that happens periodically. I know we're running out of time, and I, I did promise uh, this young lady, Cameron, she's nine. She wants to be an astronaut when she grows up. And she had a question for you. She said, what do you do for fun on the ISS? One of the things I do for fun is play around with the freedom of motion we have. I do, cannot do triple backflips on the ground, but I might be able to do one right now. Let's try. Of course, I'm not sure if you can see any of this because this is a radio call, right? Yes, yes it is, but I've heard it's going to be on NASA TV, so we will be watching. Okay, when I realized I wasn't uh, going to be seen possibly, I cut off the backflip at two, if you can imagine that. But not only that, but it's also, the view is absolutely incredible. I got a great view of the moon recently as it was rising up over the horizon. Um, I just was looking through some pictures today and came across a picture of Lebanon with the heights to the east of Lebanon with snow on them. It, it is gorgeous on the planet, and it's always different. So I love looking out the windows. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we really do uh, look forward to your return and uh, safe travels. Thanks, Jennifer. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from CARE 11 and KNSI Radio. For the ISS, we'll now resume operational space-to-ground communications.